Hello, my name is Dan Pounder, and this is my FMS 360 Sci-Fi Cinema Final Presentation Project. I chose the film Possessor, and this is me dissecting Possessor. Possessor uh, was released in 2020. It's directed by Brandon Cronenberg, the son of David Cronenberg. Uh, Possessor is an arresting sci-fi thriller about an elite corporate assassin named Tazia Voss, Voss for short. Uh, they use brain implant technology and Voss can take control of other people's bodies to execute high profile targets. As she sinks deeper into her latest assignment, Voss becomes trapped inside a mind that threatens to obl obliterate her. Next, we'll focus on sci-fi semantics and sci-fi syntax. Uh, the semantics in this film is, they're very, they're not many, um, and this is kind of a sci-fi horror. Um, so some semantics would be alternate timelines. Um, Cronenberg stated that this is an alternate 2008 timeline based in Toronto, Canada. Um, Voss can essentially time travel because she can possess someone in their body and travel in time to that person. There are a bunch of gizmos, uh, for instance, our um, character here, Tate, uh, is wearing data mining goggles that, uh, at his job that he works at. This is Voss's latest target. and. Um, He's actually data mining people through their webcams and going through and looking at their blinds and curtains to uh, see what kind of blinds and curtains people have. There are science labs. Uh, Voss works for an elite company, corporation, that is uh, gaining contracts on people they want killed. And they obviously have a lab to perform the um, possession of the body, which leads to possessing human bodies. The uh, syntax would be losing sense of self. Um, this is very much a film about not knowing who you are or knowing who you think you are. Um, also, what world are we living in? Our main character, Voss, is an assassin who tries to latch on to what she thinks is something of somewhat of a normal life, but uh, does she really have a normal life? Another is technology over consumption. Um, this, this film is interesting because it is in 2008, but the technology almost looks like 1960s, which I kind of thought was interesting. Um, so it's very tech driven and there's old cell phones, stuff like that. And then finally, privacy and technology, um, Cronenberg and later in the presentation, um, was worried about data mining. And I chose this picture because it literally is data mining. Someone is looking through, um, your webcam and is going through and looking at your blinds and curtains. The next slide, we have uh, metaphors, allegories, and ideologies. One metaphor I chose um, after reading an interview from Cronenberg was, um, he described it as ruthless, he used ruthless violence uh, to represent PTSD victims who don't physically use violence. And he gave an example like drone pilots, which I thought was interesting because, yes, Voss is possessing the body that she goes into um, and doing the killing, but she's almost doing it like a drone pilot. She's kind of in this machine. Yes, she's physically using their body to do it, but it's technically the person she's possessing doing it.
So I thought that was interesting that um, it's a violence that he chose to use, which is very brutal. Um, and the metaphor he, owed, he chose was drone pilots. An algo allegory, um, the melting face is the uh, psychological plane. Um, this process was used to illustrate one losing themselves physically and entering another consciousness of the other body. So um, you'll see this also in another slide, but Voss, every time she takes over a body, has to lose herself and become that person. So she kind of enters this other consciousness of the other body and um, this GIF I chose, or GIF, whichever team you're on, um, is a very haunting image uh, for a lot of fans of the film. Um, it's when Tate, uh, Colin Tate, um, takes control over Voss um, and puts Voss in the back and takes control back over his body and has her face on his. Um, it's very interesting. And finally, ideology, um, data privacy. In the interview I read, Cronenberg stated that when the Ed Snowden leaks came out, he was actually writing the film and was feeling a lot of despair um, at the death of privacy through technology. And it was interesting previously with the data mining glasses that he chose to put um, a company that did data mining and was looking through our webcams and um, going through and collecting our data. Next, we'll focus on gender. Um, Voss is obviously presenting as female. Um, the lead character is a female, which is always fun to see. Uh, Cronenberg had already did a film with a male lead before. This is his sophomore film. Um, and he thought it would be more interesting with a female lead. So that's encouraging. Another thing, um, I found interesting was uh, with regards to gender, Voss is kind of like the one making the money, the bread, um, bringing home the bacon to the family. Um, and it's usually always reversed. It's always the dad who's kind of um, missing at home. He's always working. It's kind of a flip side on this. Um, their family is kind of complicated and um, we'll kind of, we might dive into that a little later. And a uh, female is switching into a male's body. So Voss, um, her main, her latest target, the one that's kind of centered around the film, uh, Tate, uh, she flips and goes into his body. Moving on to sexuality. Um, this picture, <laughs> it is a little risque, but it is interesting because this is uh, Voss looking at uh, her new male genitalia uh, for the first time as Tate. And um, it's just kind of interesting how uh, Cronenberg also wanted to explore the fact that being in a different gendered body than your own and how you would explore that aspect of sexuality. You know, would you, if you're a male and become a female, maybe touch the breasts or, you know, all that good stuff. So I thought that was kind of interesting with sexuality in this film. Um, Voss also has sex as the male character. Um, she's possessed and she, like I said, sees herself with a penis, a little gender switch. Um, and then Voss also doesn't really feel herself when she comes like home after work. Um, you can tell they're essentially their family's kind of separated and she um, is trying to figure out how to maybe be more sexy for her husband. In race, um, there wasn't much race, which uh, I guess you can take how you want, but um, the opening scene, uh, Voss is a, a black woman. That's her first host there with the um, gun in her mouth. Um, Cronenberg didn't intend to cast the first host as a black woman, he said. It just kind of happened that way. And then the ending of the opening scene, 
does kind of, if you want to read into it, uh, show the police barging in and uh, brutally killing her host, Holly, here. And um, that can lead to what's, what's going on in the world with uh, police brutality and uh, African-Americans. So I thought that was kind of interesting and just kind of wanted to note. Uh, class. Uh, Voss's character, um, even though the family is separated, they are uh, living in what seems to be a middle-class home. Um, she's part of a rich company of elite assassins, so I don't think money is really an object with uh, Voss. And then just, uh, like I said, wife struggling to connect with her family uh, since she's away from work all the time. And uh, here is AI and transhumanism. A machine here that you can see can transport one human into another human's body using brain, uh, brain plant uh, technology. We don't really know a lot about the corporation. I don't even think the company's name was mentioned. And um, feeling of forgetting oneself. That's kind of the transhumanism, I would say. Um, the machine kind of making you forget who you are. Here's the video clip. This is Boss becoming Tate, going into Tate's body. Um, I chose this one just because it's a very interesting, uh, for cinematography purposes, as she melts away, we're seeing Tate here, his consciousness. He's melting away now. Here he comes back as Voss takes over his body. And Voss has officially taken over Tate's body. She wakes up as Tate. And there you have it. And finally, the impact in canon. Um, it is an individual universe, like I said, alternate timeline of present day 2008 in Toronto, Canada. Uh, Cronenberg also stated that sci-fi is a fantastic way to discuss the real world because you can take things thematically that are very real and relevant to people, but you can character them. So you can kind of go over the top with um, real things that people can relate to. And then also back to data mining on society, what is going to happen when all this data that is being collected by all these tech companies, what's going to happen to it? So I thought that was interesting. The film is very good. Um, I'll switch over to the bibliography to close here. Um, this is Voss and her boss. Um, after every possession, they go through a test to make sure the boss has come back to her original self. And uh, the ending, basically, um, the boss has to go in because Tate takes control of Voss, and Tate goes to her family's house and kills her husband and the and her son. But actually, the boss goes and possesses the son to kill Tate because it has taken over Voss. But then she knows Voss has taken back over for Tate, and Voss actually kills her son. But really, Voss needed to be separated from any human attachment, and that's what the boss wanted. So it was a very interesting movie. I definitely would check it out. And uh, thank you again. This is uh, Dan Pounder, FMS 360 Sci-Fi Cinema.